back to what's going on. Last week I made this blouse, which I am so happy about, but I didn't actually show how I made the pattern pieces for the sleeves, just because I didn't know how it was going to turn out and I wanted to make sure that it looked nice before I showed how. So this week I'm just gonna show you really quickly how I put the pattern pieces together for the blouse using a pattern that I already have. So other than the pattern pieces, you're gonna need some kind of paper. I use this Ikea paper, it's like $5.99 on a roll. It's not the best pattern paper, but it works for me. You'll need some tape, a pencil, an eraser, a ruler, measuring tape, and some scissors, and probably about 10 minutes. I started off with lying my paper flat and just taping it together, just so I have more room for the sleeve and the cape part. And you wanna take your sleeve pattern and lie it out flat making sure there's enough room all around it. Now I'm just going to trace all along the outside of the sleeve. I'm just taking a ruler and holding down the very edge of the pattern just so it doesn't move as I drag my pencil. So along the inside and all along down of the sleeve, you just need a rough outline of where it is. But since this is all gonna be the cape part, I just kind of make quick little dashes just so I know where the outline of the sleeve is. Now, before you take off your pattern, make sure you're marking any kind of notches or marks that are on the pattern. And you wanna mark clearly where the very center of your shoulder is, so the very top of the cap of the sleeve. And also if you have a gather or an e-stitch, you wanna mark where that starts. So mine is going to be right here and it goes right into the middle. The one on this side doesn't matter, but this will still have to be eased in because it's going to be bigger than what your bodice is. So you wanna make sure you know where that ease mark is. Now you wanna take your bodice and line it up where the shoulders would meet. But you also have to remember that these have seam allowances in it, so you want to account for that. So I just set mine to 5 8 to line it up. Because if you add just this onto it, you're going to add that 5 8 basically onto your shoulder, which will make your neck longer. So you want to account for that by bringing in your pattern a bit. And again, you're going to want to trace the outside of the pattern. Make your line. And make sure to add your notches where they're supposed to go as well, if there are any. So now you have your rough outline of what your sleeve is going to look like with the cape part. So this one, I wanted a kind of a rounder cape at the front. So this is where your neck edge is going to be, and it's going to attach all around the neckline and then at your shoulder. So from the neckline, it's gonna go straight down right into this. So before we connect the bottom of the capelet to the sleeve, you wanna measure how big you want your sleeve. This sleeve pattern that I use has a gathered kind of ruffled detail here. And obviously I didn't want that. So I just measured out how much space around, including seam allowances, which came out to about nine and a half. So all I did then was went from the very corner of where the sleeve ends and then I went out to nine and a half. So that shows me where I want my sleeve to end. So this extra space, I'm not gonna be using it anymore. So I just take my ruler on the very corner where that meets up, and I just draw a line all the way down. Now this one actually lined up really well, but if there's any kind of you know gap or space or divot, just kind of smooth it out so there's no weird angles and it's just a smooth line all the way around. You can also play around with this capelet part. I wanted mine more dramatic and lower, but I think on the actual pattern, hers is a little bit more straight. So she almost curves hers. So she starts from up here and she does something like that. So you just have to play around to figure out what type of capelet you want. I wanted mine more dramatic, but I think for a dress, it would be really nice to have maybe show a little bit more of the bust area um, and then have the cape more down here. So that's something I might do whenever I do the dress pattern, but for now I'm just gonna cut out the bigger one because I can always cut this off later. So now I'm going to cut all of this out and I'll show you what that looks like. So here's the sleeve pattern. 
I added some notes for myself because the pattern I was using already has a 5 8 seam allowance included. So I wanted to make sure I didn't add that in on the back side of the capelet. So basically no seam allowance all around the shoulder and neckline, all around this back seam line and none down here. The only place I wanted to add seam allowance, which I ended up just adding on and cutting it out, is from the neckline and then all the way down. But then once I got into this sleeve pattern, I didn't, I graded in the seam allowance because I had already added enough seam allowance here to include five eighths to flip over. So basically I just wanted to add it around the bottom here. That way I can serger all around here, flip it over once and I knew I had five eighths to play around with. And then I can just call it. And that is how I created the cape lip bow sleeve. It was super easy and it actually worked out really well. So hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or need anything clarified, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see the next steps on how I put everything together, just watch last week's video. I'll link it down below. It'll also be at the very end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like and I hope you subscribe. I will see everybody on Monday for my next video. And you can use any type of bladder. Bladder. Wow, this is brutal. No, why can't I see it properly? I hope you enjoyed it. Every freaking time. Out. Oh my gosh. Anytime you have to do something quick, it's just...